This is an introductory post about HTML controls, and we shall learn how to develop different types of HTML controls through this video. Now, HTML controls, as we all know, are used for getting input from the user, filling up of forms, selecting, editing, etc., entering your name, email ID, maybe address genders and all that sort of things. Types of HTML controls, we have text boxes, then selectable controls, text boxes where you can type, selectable controls where you can only select. Selectable controls are radio buttons, check boxes, and the select tag. The select tags, can be used for making drop down and list boxes. Then we have buttons. The submit button used for submitting forms. Reset button to reset a form. Then button. Button is no default action attached to it, and you need to write JavaScript to have the button do something. There are other controls, for instance, the file input control through which you select files to be uploaded, any type of files. Hidden controls. Hidden controls are used for storing information that need not be shown to the user on the web page. To start with, we need to create a HTML project and an HTML page. We are using NetBeans as our editor. It has IntelliSense. And here we'll start with creating our first page called text boxes. I'll change the title. It's text boxes now. Go to the body. Delete the previous contents and start developing text boxes over there. Single line text box. We'll start with single line text box. And for that, we need to write input type is equal to text. Input used to be the default type through which most things were done. So input type equal to text. This should create a single line text box. We'll view it in a browser. Just press OK. There you are. Input type is equal to text is available. And it has created a text box in the browser in which the user can type whatever he or she requires. Go to the view source menu by clicking, right clicking on the browser and you get uh, the exact HTML code that we had written before. So your HTML code was transferred to the browser which then rendered it and we got a text box. Type is the attribute name and text is the attribute value. Now, text is the default for type and therefore, if you write something that the browser does not understand, it will render a text box C. We wrote something which is obviously not there. There is no type matching according to what we wrote and it created a text box. If you just write input and don't even give the type tag, it still creates a text box. Text is the default and if the browser cannot match it with any actual type, it will render a text box. Now, we come back to the original, write type equal to text and write something in the value attribute. Value attribute is default input that is shown to the page when the page is loaded directly from the server, see. This is default, what we wrote in the value attribute 
is being rendered over here. <coughs> Enter the value attribute, give some value so that you can have a default display in the text box when it renders first in the browser. What next? Placeholder. Placeholder is used as a prompt to tell the user what he or she is supposed to enter in that text field, C. The placeholder will be shown when the text box is blank. Now we can see your name written over there. This is to guide the user. He or she is supposed to write the name over there. The moment you write something over it, it gets removed. The placeholder gets removed, that is. I'll zoom the browser so that we can see more clearly. There you are. I clean up the text box. The placeholder is shown. Write something is gone. Even space will remove the placeholder. What next? Read only. Read only will make the text box read only. Quite literally. You cannot type, you cannot change, you cannot overwrite. You can just see the value. Okay. Then there's the other alternative of disabling it. Disabling it will render it in a different color and it is used across all input controls. Like you can have a disabled text box, disabled buttons, etc. Obviously, you cannot have read only buttons, makes no sense. Now, let's go over to other types of text boxes. Input type equal to password will create a password box. The password does not display the text that you write into it. It displays but dots so that somebody looking over your shoulder cannot actually read what you've written. That's good. See, input type equal to password. What I write there is not displayed in the text box. It is actually displayed. Next. What happens if I display a prompt? See, your password. Clearly it displays in the proper format and not as dots. Now if the placeholder were displayed as dots, it wouldn't be very useful. So the password control can actually display placeholder in proper format and then hide characters for the value attribute. Next, color. Input type is equal to color will create a color picker. See it in the browser. It displays a black color by default. You click on it and you can actually select a color that you want. Next. Input type is equal to date. This will display a calendar and allow the user to select a particular date, month, date, and year format. Now you can go and select any date that you want. 12 is highlighted by default, 12th of September 2019, because you're recording on that date. We picked the 14th of September and that's shown over there. Next, input type is equal to number. This is used strictly for numbers. You cannot type text inside it, non-numerical text that is. And we can also have a uh, up-down buttons allowing selection more easily. How does it work? We have got min, we have got max, and we have got step. 
so it goes from 10 to 100 in steps of 5 in the yoga 10 15 25 30 you can type if you want but you cannot type anything other than numerical input which is good rather than validating after the deed is done you should create controls which do not allow invalid input to be input and this is a good way for doing it input type equal to range is another input control which allows only numbers and it's even better because the user cannot type anything into it and you get a slider for selecting values there you are it looks good you can specify your range specify the step and have a slider and people can go and select the number that you want what next see this is it this created the input type is equal to range slider input type is equal to week this allows the selection of a week there you are see the numbers on the left mark out the weeks from the beginning of the year and you select any of it and the corresponding seven days are highlighted right this is the 37th week of 2019 September it falls in September 36th and so on what next input type is equal to month you can pick a month from whatever year you, year you want there you will see this is a month being displayed and as you can see the days of the next month were actually disabled now see the months are on display you can pick any of them then the year is 2019 you can change it from here okay useful control you get to select a month what next we've done dates we've done weeks we've done months what comes next input type is equal to time using this you get to select hours minutes and seconds e hours and that's for minutes and this is for seconds and you actually have a am pm over there hour minutes and am or pm all controlled by up and down buttons which is good then input we've got text areas now text area is multi-line unlike all the controls that have used so far which are single lines text area is a multi-line control it's also a body control in the sense that it is a body the text area tag is written in two parts all the input tags that we use so far were written as a single tag closing within itself now how do these controls work when put inside a form to do that we create a new page HTML page using a form 
this will allow us to check some extra attributes. Let's start with creating a form and closing the form. Inside it, we'll create a input type is equal to email. Now, what is type equal to email? Email is obviously text, but text in a particular format. This will allow us to verify things before submitting to the form. That is, the user has written it in a correct format. The email is actually in an email format. We will try another control. Telephone is also allowed. You enter value in the telephone format, telephone number format. We'll also use a simple text box and put a required attribute in it. Simply required will do. Now, all these are inside the form that is necessary. Create a submit button so that you can submit the form and check the behavior of required and of email. Now I run it, view it in the browser. There you are. Press submit, see. The required text box displays a message saying that please fill out this field. Now I fill out it and submit it and write something in the email format, in the email text box, submit, see. It says that the format is not correct. I fill out the proper format and the form can be submitted. So the required one wanted a value and the email wanted something entered in email format. Once again, we'll press it. If I don't write anything in the email, it is submitted. What if the email is required and the email obviously has to be given in an email format. For that you write required in the input type is equal to email. Input type equal to email and required. Now the input is both required and has to be filled out in the proper format. Please fill out this fill, start filling it. Now, we'll try a reset button. What does the reset button do? Input type is equal to reset. It <coughs> changes the form to the original input that was when it was loaded from the server C. I write something, press reset, it goes blank. Why? Because the original values were blank. Now, we'll go back to the text type is equal to email input text box. Enter a default value using the value attribute as we did before. I enter my email address into it. There, it's done. Save it. View it in the browser now. See. Delete it, press reset, write something, press reset. It will go back to the original state that was when it was loaded from the server. So the reset does not clear a form. It puts it back into the original state that was when it was loaded from the server. What next? Just a brief revision of all the things that we wrote. You can see those on the screens. Please try out all these controls by yourself. That will make it easy and you can query if you find something is not properly 